All right, folks, what is going on? This episode 515 of the First and Frame Rate Show. I am Via Vala. Over here, we talk about George Southern Atlanta Falcons football. Now, in the image, the screen, if you're looking at the show on YouTube or Rumble, you're going to see my son. He's like right here, right behind me. Today of this recording is his birthday. He turns four years old. He got him a Nintendo Switch for, uh, you know, for his birthday, and he is having a blast. So you'll probably see him back there. Yeah, that's right. It's your birthday. So you'll probably see him back there playing the game, and it's all good. It's still a mess in here. We're still trying to get things together as far as possibly moving and all that good stuff. So please bear with us. Hopefully everything will go smooth, and uh, we'll just uh, go from there. If this is your first time here, welcome. I can be found on YouTube and Rumble. I'm also on Anchor Stitcher, boom, Anchor Stitcher, Spotify, Apple, and Google Podcasts. And I just want to thank you guys for being, you know, really, really uh, supportive of the show. I really, really appreciate it. I cannot thank you guys enough. Uh, one more thing, this show is brought to you by BetUS. Hit that link down in the description. Put down $100 and you get 125% bet book bonus. So that helps the show. That will help you if you want to, uh, you know, bet on these games coming up in the NFL, MMA, uh, NCAA basketball, NBA, uh, all that good stuff. All that stuff is there. So hopefully you guys will check that out and hope you guys enjoy it today. Today, we're going to be talking about the defensive side of the football. Yesterday, we talked about some wide receivers that possibly could pick that we could possibly pick up. But we're going straight into the draft and talk about some prospects that are coming out that the Falcons could possibly get. I'm pretty much going to talk about maybe four players, four players that that jumped at my interest. And I may throw a little few in there, but I'm going to give you four concrete guys. And I'm going to tell you right now, none of them are in the linebacker position because I know a lot of people talking about Will Anderson. I get it. Don't get me wrong. Will Anderson is a beast, but I just don't think that that'll be the guy that we will get. Um, So I think we're going to go, um, the front seven once again, as far as the front four once again, I think we're going to go there this go round because we got a lot of guys on the uh, linebacker uh, side that can actually rush the passer. You know, Evacete is still there. He's a little bit kind of a tweener. He can get on the line or he could play at linebacker. He's still got Troy Anderson. Rashad Evans is possibly coming back off of a one-year deal. You got some guys, Michael Walker as well. You have some guys that can actually do some things around that area but you want to get a guy that's going to be in the trenches on that front four so i think that's one guy we're going to talk about also i think we're probably on the defensive side we're going to pick up a cornerback and i think that's something that we really need as well so we're going to look at the front four and we're going to look at the defensive backs and we'll give you two guys from each uh area that i think that's going to be pretty good Hopefully you guys enjoy it. Give me some feedback if you want to as well. I can be found on Twitter at VFVala or if you're on YouTube or Rumble, click, click the links. Um, not the link, but click the comment section and let me know what you think. But if you're listening on the podcast avenue, I'm always be able to be found on the Twitter space. So you can give me a feedback there. All right, let's go ahead and get into this. I'm going to jump into defensive lineman first and I'm going to give you my thoughts. Now, obviously, Jalen Carter is the guy. That's one person I absolutely believe that we should get at the defensive tackle, help out Grady Jarrett. There's not much to really talk about here when it comes to this guy. This guy is a monster at 6'3", 310 pounds. He's going to be excellent on the other side of Grady Jarrett right there in the middle, plugging up anything that tries to go up the middle. We're going to be giving centers and guards hell if these guys are actually be put together right there. And I think at the number eight pick, there's a really good chance that Jalen Carter would be there. But what if he's not? What if he's not there? Where do we go from there? Now, there's two. Well, there's another person, but I'm kind of torn between the two because I I really don't know how I feel about one or the other. And I know I said there's going to be four guys, two from each uh, area, and I said Jalen Carter is the other one. But I'm looking at this Miles Murphy guy and Brian Breezy. I think I said his name right. Breezy? Brees? I think it's Brees. Please forgive me. I think Brian Brees might be that guy at 6'5", 305. He has the size. He's a defensive tackle. And he actually came on pretty strong at the end of the season. You know, there were some times where he was kind of, you know, uh, not really, uh, you know, showing uh, spurts. But the North Carolina game, I think that was the game that he actually showed, like, how well he can be. You know, showed what he can do. So uh, I think that's going to be the guy right there. 
Um, Miles Murphy is another one. He does play a little bit in between the defensive end and edge rusher side. I'm not necessarily sure we actually go edge rusher here. I really think we may go defensive tackle. And the fact that defensive tackle is so, so loaded with talent uh, as far as, you know, you got one, two, three, you, know, you got like four or five guys that could possibly go in the top, you know, in, in I, I say in the top, you know, 40, you know, you got, I mean, you got, you got some guys that could possibly go. I didn't say all five will go, but you got four or five guys that are, that are in that range that that could be in the top 40, the top 50 picks in the draft. I mean, you got a lot of good guys here. It's going to be really hard to, to, to pretty much pick one, you know, because they're going to be trying. I believe they're probably going to be flying off the board. So when you look at a Jalen Carter, there's not much of a drop off after what you see uh, on the big board for defensive tackles or edge rushers. I just think that Jalen Carter is going to be the guy in no, no doubt, but there's a lot of talent here to where you can look at and be like, all right, you're still going to get somebody good. But so with the Falcons drafting at number eight, I feel that Jalen Carter could still be on the board. I think that that will be the guy to get. But if you don't get him, I think Brian Bre- uh, um, Brian Breesey is, is going to be the guy that you might want to pick up right behind him. Now, there's other guys that are that are honorable mentions. I mean, you're looking at um, Psyche Kia from um, Baylor. I mean, he's a huge guy, 6'4", 358. I mean, that's somebody you might want to look at as well. And also, B.J. Ojolari is another one from LSU. I'm not necessarily uh, – yeah, I know, baby. I'm not necessarily uh, sold on Ojolari, but I get it. I mean, but my two, Jalen Carter and Brian Breesey, definitely those two guys, I feel like those are going to be the ones, the two that is going to be one or two at number eight. Now, I already know I talked about other wide receivers as well that could be there as well that, you know, the Falcons may go, go after because they've been known to go for pass catchers in the first round or at the top 10. But I feel that this is the year that you get a defensive guy. And I feel like Jalen Carter is that guy, Brian Breesey as well. And I mentioned a couple other guys that I feel that may be able to do something uh, on top of that as well. Going to the defensive backs, I feel like, Day two or second round, definitely you may want to go here if you don't get a receiver. Even if you go in day two, you're going to have about four or five guys to pick from. But if I had to pick, let's just say, for instance, they do go first round and go with a with a cornerback. Keelan Ringo from Georgia, and I know I sound very biased, you know, because of the state of Georgia. I'm not necessarily big on Georgia. I'm a Georgia Southern fan. But Keely Ringo was like probably the best guy that, that does, you know, man coverage in this draft. You know, I mean, at 6'2", 210, and he has a four point, you know, a 4340. I mean, it's going to be really hard to pass up on him even at number eight if they don't go pass rush. So that's something to think about as well. Another guy that I like, and this is not necessarily my another, number two, but somebody that's not really getting looked at that could be a day two pick or maybe a second round pick is Christian Gonzalez out of Oregon. Another big cornerback, six foot two, two Oh one runs a four, three, two as well. Does very well at tracking the ball. I watched him play a little bit. He's not that bad of a player. You have a couple other big receivers, Antonio Johnson out of Texas A&M, even though Texas A&M had a pretty down year, I still believe that they have some talent there. Now, one person I feel that is a, a hidden gem that not many people have been talking about, up until as of late, I think Cam Smith out of South Carolina is another one. But if I, if you really want my opinion on these two, like you're really looking at the second round or maybe later, the guys that are probably going to be available, you're probably going to be looking at uh, uh, Cam Smith at South Carolina, or you may be looking at a Christian Gonzalez. If nobody reaches, these are probably going to be the guys that may be available. Someone else you may want to look out is e- Eli Ricks. He could be another one that could be a day two or second round guy. I think Keely Ringo is probably going to be gone. But if we do go at number eight, he should be available. But day two, I think he's not going to be there. But if you look in there, or not, well, even in second round, I don't think he's going to be there. Joey Porter Jr. is another one from Penn State. He They say he's the big, he's the best cornerback in the draft. I, I, I don't see him actually being available as well. So, 
if you go at number eight, you may have these guys if you don't go to pass rush. But with the secondary or cornerbacks, I really feel that to help A.J. Terrell, they're probably going to go later in the rounds, probably second or third round. So that's where you're looking at a guy like a Cam Smith, which I think that's going to be the first pick that I will look at in a day two, second round or uh, yeah, second round or day two. Also, somebody you might want to look at is Christian Gonzalez out of Oregon. Like I said, he's six foot two, two hundred one. He runs a four three two. You did it. My son is loving his Nintendo Switch. As you can tell in the background. I see that he's another big physical guy that actually could be pretty good. Second day, second round guy. If you want to get somebody to help AJ Terrell, I think those two guys, the Cam Smith of the world or a Christian Gonzalez, you still can't go wrong with the Eli Ricks. Maybe even a Brian Branch out of Alabama. Those are another two guys because for me personally, I like the bigger physical receivers. I know A.J. Terrell is not this big as the other guys at 6'2 or whatever, but I would want to see a guy like that that's going to be on the opposite side. Like I said, Christian Gonzalez, 6'2", 201. Eli Rick, 6'2", 190. You also have Brian Branch, which is a little bit undersized, as well as Cam Smith. I'm not going to say they're undersized. They're at six foot, which is still is a very good ideal size for a cornerback and these guys uh, have shown that they could play very well so like i said i think that what we're looking at here we're looking at keely ringo easily if we go at number eight and we go cornerback which i doubt but keely ringo might be that guy if you want to go that route because i think the first two i think the first two picks that we do just has to be defense i know i talked about the quarterbacks last episode i mean the, the wide receivers last episode but I just feel like we need to go defense. I, I mean, at, at this point, that that's just my personal opinion. But if we do go offense, that's the episode for you to talk about because I think we'll go wide receiver. But defensively, second round on back, definitely day two. You got a lot of cornerbacks here that could probably make some noise. You got a lot of guys here. Um, after Ringo and I mean, not even after Ringo and Porter, you just have a lot of talent here. You know, but I really feel like the Cam Smith, or the Christian Gonzalez. Those are going to be my picks. With honorable mention, Eli Ricks or a Brian Branch, you still can't go wrong with uh, Jalen Johnson as well. I, I just, I mean, Jalen Jones from Texas A&M. But I feel like it's going to be Cam Smith or Christian Gonzalez. So those are the four that I'm talking about. You go back to the defensive rankings or the defensive linemen, Jalen Carter, you go there at number one, or number eight, there, there's, no, there, there's no denying that. You go get Jalen Carter. I think we got number eight pick or number seventh. One of the two. I can't remember. Whatever the case may be, you go with Jalen Carter. He should be there. Brian Breesey is, is the second one. You go defensive tackle. I don't see us going defensive in too much because of the fact that defensive end, we kind of got that sold up within our pass with, with our rushes that we got already. Those guys interchange. But somebody to help Grady Jarrett, Jalen Carter or Breesey. As far as defensive back goes, like I said, Kelly, Keely Ringo is that guy. And I know, like I said, I sound pretty biased because of the Georgia connection. You know, you know, I'm a Georgia Southern fan, but talent is talent. And I, I think Kelly Ringo is that guy if you decide to go at number eight. But I still believe, like, we're going to go cornerback sometime in this draft. And the ones you want to get is Cam Smith from South Carolina, also Christian Gonzalez from Oregon. Those two guys are my picks. There's some other guys on here that's actually – Pretty impressive. The two cornerbacks from Alabama, Branch and Ricks. Can't go wrong with them. And, you know, Antonio Johnson from Texas A&M is another guy. 6'3", 195. Also, um, I would like to say, and I don't know. I think that's pretty much it. Honestly, I think those are the ones. But I think Cam Smith and I'm looking at Christian Gonzalez. So let me know what you guys think. I'm going to get up out of here. If you like this commentary, hit the like button, share this podcast, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Let me know what you think about these defensive players that I talked about, the defensive ends and the cornerbacks. Like I said, I didn't talk too much about the safeties or I haven't talked too much about the linebackers. I think we got a pretty good solid area linebacker there. Maybe we go safety later on in the draft. It's not that big of a need. And to be honest with you, there's not that many safeties that I've seen that actually stand out like that. You got a couple of them, but I don't think that we're going to be able to pick these guys up that early. Um, really, really quick before I get out of here, you got either Brandon Joseph, you got Jordan Battle at safety, 
You even got uh Chris Chris Smith from Georgia. I just don't see us picking those any safety this early in the draft. It, you know, first or second round. You're probably looking at late day two if we decide to get uh, a safety, or maybe even day three. And um, I may touch on the safeties down the road, maybe some hidden gems, some guys that we may not even, you know, talk about right now or nobody's talking about in general, not only just with the safeties, but just the draft in general, because a lot of guys who make the team and do very well are guys that those ones you don't really think about. Look at Jared Bernhardt. You know what I'm saying? Look at Tyler Algier. I knew Tyler Algier up front. I saw him play against my George Southern Eagles. I knew what he was capable of. But even at a fifth round pick, I didn't see him rush for a thousand yards. I mean, that was just phenomenal. And he looks like a really good running back. But nevertheless, I can go on a whole other tangent there. I can be found on Anchor Stitcher, Spotify, Apple Google Podcasts. Let me know what you guys think. Once again, thank you guys for the support. Click that link, Bet US. I'm also on YouTube and Rumble. Anything you want to discuss, find me on Twitter at VFBaller. I said enough. I'm going to handle and uh, hang out with my son. I'm going to handle him on this game because he, Claims you know what he's doing, but I need to see it for myself because this gaming thing, he's starting to get really good at. Anyway, I'm going to do that. I will see you guys on Thursday. Thank you guys for all the support, and I'll see you on the next one. Y'all take it easy, and y'all be blessed. Peace.